Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be making cider style for uh, the BJCP C1A, which is a New World Cider. New World Ciders are, are relatively easy to make for uh, beginner cider makers. Uh, there are several examples on the BJCP website and the AHA website, the American Home Brewers Association, of uh, typed C1A ciders that are just made with store-bought juice uh, that when usually actually do pretty well inside uh, competitions. So the, the premise behind a New World Cider is that it doesn't use dedicated cider apples for its, uh, its creation. It uses culinary or table apples, and using those apples, it's able to, uh, to produce a, a cider that is not something that is typically found within the English and French style ciders, which are more balanced towards having heavier tannin using specific cider apples, or for the French ciders, uh, uh, arrested fermentation and sweetness. So, uh, New World ciders can be anywhere between uh, dry to fully sweet. Um, they can have uh, basically uh, any any variety of uh, of combination of apples in order to to fulfill that uh, from uh, uh, completely still to sparkling and uh, in the uh, the final carbonation level. Uh, it's uh, it's really kind of just an open ended category. So today we're going to be making one of my favorite ciders to make. I call it Just Cider. It's, uh, it's a, uh, a cider that uses uh, treetop apple juice. Um, I use treetop apple juice specifically um, because one of the none of the ingredients on it have added ascorbic acid. Hi, Max. Have added ascorbic acid, which is uh, vitamin C, and it kind of throws off the overall uh, acid profile of the cider. So uh, if you're going to be recreating this recipe, um, use treetop, the uh, one gallon that the one gallon bottles, the uh, half gallon bottles use ascorbic acid in it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, let's go with the cider style criteria now. So a New World Cider is, as mentioned before, is made with culinary slash table apples, which can oftentimes use wild or crab apples to increase add our time bounds. Um, the, uh, in general, uh, any cider style that does not fit into uh, any of the traditional uh, no special ingredient cider styles goes into New World. So it's kind of a lump, uh, an all, all size fits, well, a one size fits all category for, for anything that just it, it uses apples and it doesn't have a specific process like a French or an English cider does. Um, so uh, the overall impression is a refreshing drink of some substance, not watery or bland. Uh, sweet ciders must not be cloying, dry ciders must not be too austere, uh, basically saying that uh, it has to be a, a well-balanced cider. Um, uh, flavor slash aroma. Uh, sweet or low alcohol ciders uh, may have some aroma and flavor. Dry ciders are more wine-like with some, uh, some esters. So ester production is not a fault uh, for this cider style, as long as it goes on and balances with your uh, your cider that you're doing, uh, that's that's fine. Um, sugar and acid should combine to give a refreshing character. Acid is medium to high refreshing, but must not be harsh or biting. Um, I find that with a lot of the uh, store juices, uh, that they kind of, uh, uh, while I, I really like the treetop, it does need a little bit of acid correction to it, so we're gonna get to that in a second. Uh, appearance, clear to brilliant. Uh, medium gold in color, uh, medium, uh, sorry, pale to medium golden color. So, uh, once again, with the cider styles from the BJCP, they do not allow hazy varieties. That's why we're using filtered apple juice. Uh, so that we don't have to worry about uh, waiting a really long time for it to clear. Uh, mouth, mouth feel, medium body. Uh, some tannin should be present for a slight to moderate astringency, but little bitterness. So we're going to be adding a little bit of extra tannin via, the, via white wine tannin. And we'll get to that when we get into the ingredients in a second. Uh, the uh, uh, comments, the ideal cider serves well as a session drink and suitably accompanies a wide variety of food. So in general, the, most of the ciders are supposed to be uh, easily uh, more, multiple drinks over the course of uh, you know, whatever outing or gathering you're doing. It's supposed to be something that's not supposed to be too heavy, uh, so a session drink. Um, so uh, some of the statistics that we have here. Uh, original gravity anywhere between 1.045 and 1.065, finishing at 0.995 to 1.020 for ABVs of anywhere between 5 and 
Uh, that's a New World Cider. So New World Ciders are relatively, uh, relatively easy to make with uh, ingredients you can find in the store. So we're going to be doing that today with the exception of our, uh, our additions here. Our malic acid, our white wine tannin, FT Blanc, and our Fermato for our nitro addition. Our primary additions for this recipe are going to be 5 gallons of treetop apple juice, 10 grams of malic acid, 6 grams of FT Blanc white wine tannin, and 12 grams of Fermato. Our secondary additions are going to be 3 Camden tablets and 2 teaspoons of potassium sorbate. And finally, during back sweetening, we are going to be adding 5 grams of malic acid and 24 ounces of apple juice concentrate, or two cans. Fermato will give us our nitrogen addition to our, uh, our, our yeast. Um, the white wine tannin will help build body and uh, kind of produce some of that tannic quality that is missing with the, uh, the store-bought juices. And the malic acid will increase the acid content to make it more of a, a sharp um, finish rather than the uh, uh, smooth finish. The yeast we're using today is Saf Cider AC4. Um, this is uh, a, a different yeast strain than, uh, than normal um, yeast that you'll find for home brewing. Uh, this is Saccharomyces bayonus, or bayonus, B-A-Y-A-N-U-S. Um, this yeast is not uh, Saccharomyces cerevisium. I believe this one actually has a, a special gene inside of it that kills Saccharomyces cerevisium. So we can't use them in combination with each other. For, uh, if you're going to have a, a try to restart fermentation, it has a killer gene in here, I believe. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, put a uh, note here if it doesn't. This cider yeast is balanced towards having a nice crisp flavor, and it's uh, it's more of a uh, representative of the apple character rather than uh, rather than anything else. It doesn't really produce very many off off esters, so that's why we're using this particular yeast. Our, we, I've measured the specific gravity of our juice. It is 1.050, and fermented to dry, which we will be doing on this one, will be a final. Um, it will be a final alcohol by volume of about 6.56 percent. The entire recipe and the ingredients used can be found in a link in the description. So if you would like to kind of uh, have a tabular list of everything being used. Uh, go ahead and check that out. But right now we're going to go into making the cider. So we're going to go ahead and measure out our 10 grams of malic acid, our 6 grams of white wine tannin, and our 12 grams of fermato. And we're going to go ahead and uh, put it into this bowl. We're going to add just enough water in this, filtered water in this, to, uh, to combine. And, and we're going to put it in the microwave for a, about a minute and a half. Well, we've gone through and made our disgusting yeast slurry, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, start filling up our fermenter. This fermenter has been cleaned and sanitized, and uh, we have our wrapped pill in here, which I'm pretty excited to be using for this. Uh, it'll give us some real-time data uh, that we have uh, for our fermentation, and I get to make some graphs. And uh, I love making graphs, so <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to, to see how the fermentation progresses over time. So we're gonna go ahead and start out by uh, getting some uh, cider into here, oxygenating this, uh, adding our nutrients, and then adding the rest of the cider up on top of it, and then putting our hydrometer in, and uh, we'll be off to the races uh, after we, of course, add our yeast. So we'll go ahead and our funnel on top, and then add in this juice, which I use to calibrate the hydrometer with. I'm gonna pour this very carefully at first because I don't want to spill this. That's all in there. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off, put it on top of our uh, sanitizer over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and add the lid to this with our um, bung over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a really good vigorous shake. Uh, I want to add an, uh, a lot of oxygen into this. Nice good shake. Make sure you cover your bone. Whenever you cover the hole, make sure you slowly release to relieve the pressure on it. Go ahead and add the rest of the juice. Not caring if we're turbulent or not. We have a lot of oxygen here. Uh, so we're going to add a couple gallons and we're going to add our nutrient and then we're going to add the rest of it. Our nutrient slash cannon addition. There's a lot of foam in here that's good. 
The more foam, the better. It means we're getting a lot of oxygen dissolved in here. Add our nutrients slash uh, acid and tannin addition directly in here. And then we're going to slowly add these last two gallons in here. Um, I'm going to add one gallon, cut open our yeast packet, add that, and then I'm going to add the last gallon. And then we're going to put the last gallon of juice. Finally, we're going to add our hydrometer to this. And via the wrapped portal, we're going to go ahead and start a new brew session and our, uh, put our airlock back on, and we're ready to go. We'll, uh, we'll check back in uh, about a, a month or so. Uh, today's date is uh, the 30th of May, so we'll check in about uh, the 30th of June and uh, see how we're progressing. Hello everybody, welcome back. We are continuing our New World Cider. This thing has been fermenting. It's currently the 23rd of June. It started on the 30th of May, so just over three weeks that this has been fermenting and he is pretty much, uh, he's pretty much cleared out. Um, fermentation stopped about eight days into it. And according to our new little digital hydrometer, it stopped at about uh, 1.002 gravity. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and verify that with my hydrometer over here. But looking at the meniscus of this, it says it's at 1.000. So our hydrometer seems to be not 100% accurate, which is fine. It's an estimation about the amount of time it takes to ferment things out. And well, it's cool data regardless. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice initial sample. It's uh, pretty apple-y still. Has a kind of a rustic type of character. Kind of hard to say. I, would, I don't wanna use the word, people use the word barnyard kind of in a bad sense, but this is kind of Kind of has a little rustic-y smell to it, kind of woody. Interesting. I don't give it a sample. Hmm, that's pretty good. I mean, the smell is not following the taste. There is there is definitely apple character here, but it's just uh, for on the smell, but there is something else. It's, I'm wondering if that's a, a quality of this yeast. I'm using a new variety of yeast uh, to do this AC4. I haven't used AC4 before. So it does have a little bit more body than I would imagine. Uh, it has a little, the uh, I believe the term is legs on it. Uh, that's actually pretty good. Uh, it kind of sticks to the glass. It's also kind of sticks to your mouth too. Hi Max, making an appearance. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get this transferred into secondary and let it condition for a little while, uh, probably a month or so. And that is, uh, that's going to be where we just leave it off because uh, apple cider usually just gets better with age. So. We're going to go ahead and move this uh, via a process called racking. All right, let me go ahead and get started. Now that we have our cider transferred over into our secondary uh, vessel, uh, they call it secondary fermentation, but really no fermentation happens in this stage. It's more of a conditioning phase. Um, so we're going to go ahead and stabilize our cider now. It, to stabilize, we're adding in a uh, mixture of potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfate. We're adding in 45 parts per million potassium metabisulfate. And I forget what the parts per million is for the potassium sorbate, um, but it, the equivalents are uh, three Camden tablets or uh, two and a half teaspoons of potassium sorbate. So I'm just going to add directly into it. We're going to, as you can see, once we add to this, we're having some degassing happen. Degassing will occur naturally over the next few months, so I'm not gonna worry about degassing this mixture right now. It does appear that we do have some uh, fermentation gases though dissolved in solution, which is uh, to be expected after three weeks. We're gonna let this sit around for a month, at least. Uh, I, I usually don't drink cider that's younger than two months old. Uh, it's not really, um, it doesn't really give the cider a good chance to uh, express itself in that amount of time. So we're gonna go ahead and set this aside for a month at least, uh, most likely a couple months uh, to allow it to age, and then we'll be back then. Hello everybody, welcome back. It's uh, been about two months since we started our uh, first of our C1A style ciders. We're gonna give it a sample and see if it needs any adjustments before we put it in our keg. Currently on the nose, it's 
uh, kind of uh, smells a little bit like white wine, kind of uh, dry grape, kind of a lot of wine esters in here. A um, little bit of apple in the back end. When I say on the back end, I mean that it is uh, not the first smell that you smell. This smells more like a dry white wine to me than it smells more like an apple cider. Hmm, that is actually kind of pretty good, refreshing. Uh, very apple on the, the flavor. Yeah, there's, there's a slight drying uh, sensation here. Uh, it's uh, kind of subtle. Yeah, white smells more like white wine, tastes like medium apple. This is it's pretty good. I would say this is within style for this, for a dry cider. Acid balance wise, uh, it could use a little bit more acid. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and give this a, a five gram of malic acid adjustment in order to bring up that malic acid and could, like make the apple flavor pop. Um, but for tannin adjustment, uh, it, it does have discernible tannins on the low end, so I'm going to go ahead and say that no, we're not making a tannin adjustment to this. We have our five grams of malic acid here. Instead of adding it directly to our secondary vessel, since we're about to just transfer it to the keg anyway, I'm going to transfer it to the keg, add the malic acid in there, and allow it to mix up in the keg. One plunge out, and one plunge to start. Our cider has been transferred into our keg, and now it's going to go ahead and carbonate. So I'm going to set this one up to 15 PSI at 38 degrees, and that'll be about uh, over two and a half, uh, about almost three atmospheres of carbonation in here. So kind of kind of think soda carbonation level is what I'm going for this cider. Um, that is definitely within the uh, sparkling range. So this will be sparkling uh, apple cider here in just a couple weeks. Hello everybody, welcome back to the unplanned portion of our uh, C1B cider brew. Um, this unplanned portion is brought to you by lack of sweetness. Uh, so, oh, when I got the cider finished, it was, it was, in my opinion, pretty good, um, for a, a dry cider, um, but it seemed like it was a little bit out of balance, the other elements in here. When you go completely dry in a New World cider, you don't want it to be too austere, um, and I would describe that flavor that it was having as austere. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to add... Uh, a couple cans of apple juice concentrate into here to kind of boost up apple notes and to also add some sweetness to our cider. But in order to do that, we had to siphon off um, a fair amount of, uh, well, we bottled two, can two bottles of 16 ounces of, um, of our dry stuff so that we just, it doesn't go to waste. So this has already been carbonating, so um, we had to take some out of the keg in order to do this. Uh, standard procedure, just remove the amount of liquid you intend on removing there. Uh, the cider had been stabilized, so no issue about stabilization there. Um, we're just going to go ahead and add in our apple juice concentrate now. All right, this process is simple. Took off the lid. Just going to add the cans directly into here. It's going to cause some foaming to occur because it is carbonated. Shouldn't be too much because we siphoned off a fair amount of liquid in here. Then we're just going to simply replace the top. Perfect. All right. That has been back Sweden now. I'm going to go ahead and put CO2 on it to reset the uh, the seal of the uh, uh, of the actual uh, keg, uh, the lid of the keg, and then I'm going to shake it around. Uh, this does have a floating dip tube in it, so it is going to be a little bit noisy. So I'm just going to cut the auto here as I shake this around. All right, a uh, fully loaded keg uh, weighs at least 40 pounds, so it's a pretty big boy. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back inside the uh, uh, kegerator and let it uh, carbonate over the next couple of weeks. We'll be good to go. 